This program is dedicated to those that paid for their lives at the hands of the state. Welcome to Silent Voices Monthly News Magazine. Here you can get all the child welfare happenings in the news and social media. Welcome. And today we're going to start things off with another letter from our mailbox. This comes to us from one of our viewers who watches our program on our YouTube channel. A little while back I posted about finding my youngest son on the uh, Alabama adoption site. We were receiving fairly regular emails from our oldest. Our daughter we hadn't heard from her in a while, so I became worried and decided to do another search. I spoke of how my three children had been split up, but now they are all together awaiting adoption. I am happy that they are all together and seem to be doing fairly well. I cried when I first saw them and their pictures. Upon finding them there together, my heart went into multiple directions at once. Relief that they were together, but hurt because after two, three years, counting from my the time I had my last visit before the TPR, my God, I can't believe how big my children have gotten. I downloaded every picture they had taken for the site of the purposes of getting them adopted. I will post a picture of all three. On the left is our son Austin, age 13. Our daughter Nicole, age 14. And our youngest, standing in front of her, is Johnny, a.k.a. Mr. Peanut. God, I miss and love these children more than I can say. And thank you for sending them that letter. If you'd like to share something on our program, or if you would like to be a guest on our program, you can write us at contact at silentvoices.co. That's contact at silentvoices.co. You can also contact us at miparentalrights.gmail.com That's miparentalrights at gmail.com Let's go to this month's edition of Michigan for Parental Rights Wall of Shame. Candace Downer battered her 18-month-old foster daughter to death. With such force, the child suffered more than 90 injuries. She is accused of beating little Kagan so ferociously that she had broken legs and ribs and suffered severe head and spine injuries. The little girl who was fostered by Downer after her drug addict mom was unable to look after her died last September. A post-mortem revealed she had 91 injuries to her body, including 29 recent scars and marks to her head and neck. Kagan was found unconscious at Downer's home in Birmingham, England on September 5th last year after suffering a cardiac arrest. She, she was rushed to Birmingham Children's Hospital but was pronounced dead. Candace Downer, you're on the Michigan for parental rights Wall, wall, wall of shame. Oh, Maria, I wouldn't want to be on that wall of shame. Let's go to our news anchor, a look back at the child welfare news highlights. Last week on Legally Kidnapped. Good evening. 
Our top story this week, the Los Angeles County Child Protective Industry is taking heat over an increase in child deaths under its watchful eye with the system sucks blaming the agency's attempts to reduce foster care numbers as the cause. Two county supervisors, however, are criticizing the report which was leaked to the LA Times claiming that the newspaper is misrepresenting the numbers. A group who has helped to lead the search for a missing foster child named Hussini Campbell has given up the search and wants to start a summer camp for kids. In Arizona this week, brothers and sisters who have been separated for long periods of time in the foster care system get to spend a whole afternoon together at a park. The state of Nebraska plans to privatize its foster care system, and the Nebraska Foster Care Review Board bashes the state for its reform efforts. A group of state legislatures from across the country are working on legislation that would put a stop to the growing number of anchor babies in the U.S., and the state of Arkansas cries about a shortage of foster homes. The big pharmaceutical companies want to label toddlers as depressed so that they can drug them, and the state of Washington tries to cut many Medicaid costs by cutting back on the psychotropic drugging of poor children. A new study reveals that gay parents are more likely to have gay kids, and gay kids are being bullied in the Florida foster care system. The number of homeless aged out foster youth in the state of Washington is a growing problem. A study from the University of Colorado suggests that children who have had fathers that have been in prison are at a higher risk of drug abuse. And another report blames the U.S. prison system for having inadequate policies for dealing with prisoners who are pregnant, giving birth, or already mothers. Child protection policies are going to be discussed in Fiji this week. The head of Amnesty International says that legal failings that allow institutional child abuse in Ireland need to be addressed. And the Pope orders a probe into child protection procedures in the Irish Catholic Church. In Israel, the ombudsman blasts a family court judge for not allowing a gay father's twins from a surrogate mother in India into the country. In South Korea, an adoptive mother gets busted for killing her adopted daughters for the life insurance money. An eight-month pregnant woman from China is beaten and dragged to the hospital kicking and screaming and forced to undergo an abortion for violating China's one-child policy, and a child social worker from New Zealand gets six years for sexual abuse. The child protective industry in Australia goes to the crapper this week as a new report into the state of child protection in the Northern Territories is released. The government allocates $164 million to ease a backlog of cases and recruit more workers from other countries. This after a quarter of recruits from the UK have chosen to break their contracts rather than work for such an overburdened and poorly managed system. And calls for the government to be stripped of its child protection powers. An Australian grandmother accuses the child protective industry in Victoria of failing to protect her grandchildren from a pedophile. And a former ombudsman from Victoria is calling for the sterilization of parents who the child protective industry claims is abusive. In England this week, a U.S. charity pays a British drug addict 200 pounds to get a vasectomy. Torbay's child protective services is found inadequate according to an Ofsted report. In Canada this week, parents hold a protest in front of the Children's Aid Society in Northumberland. Ontario. A 22-year-old candidate for city council and his mother are reunited in another Facebook success story after CAS took him away 10 years ago. And a dying mother puts out one last desperate plea to find her long-lost daughter who was taken into adoption back in 1948. In entertainment news this week, Jodie Foster is getting sued by the 17-year-old who she beat for taking her picture. And her good friend Mel wants his 11-month-old daughter to pay rent. Porn star Janine Lindemulder takes Jesse James back to court again over a custody matter involving their daughter Sunny. James. And rock star Rod Stewart reunites with his daughter who has been put up for adoption back in the 1960s. The parents of a child who died in a foster home in Oklahoma is suing the child protective industry and the foster parents who killed her. And a judge in Las Vegas shows his displeasure with a persistent child advocacy group from California who is trying to sue Clark County in the state of Nevada for harming the foster children in its care. In this week's Foster Crimes Report, the former executive director of a California Casa puppet agency pleads no contest to a charge of embezzling 46000 a former Fresno County foster parent, youth minister, and convicted sex offender is given a license to run a daycare. In Las Vegas, a nine-year-old boy is made to testify about the abuse he suffered while in a foster home. A social worker from Ohio is accused of breaking a man's jaw. A Texas foster care agency fails to protect foster kids from sexual abuse while living in a group home. And a caseworker from Indiana is arrested for sharing confidential documents and photos of a child abuse case. A mean old cop from Toronto by the name of Officer Bubbles sues YouTube commenters after making cartoons and teasing him about being an asshole for. If the bullet touches me, I'm going to be arrested for assault.
understanding. Bubbles. Yes, that's right. It's a deliberate act on your behalf. I'm going to arrest you. Do you understand me? The Texas cheerleader is kicked off the squad for refusing to cheer for the boy who she says raped her. And a father from Chicago, Illinois is cleared of charges for taking his daughter to church. In Georgia, a woman was arrested because her 14-month-old toddler was making too much noise in the library. In Florida, a sheriff's deputy is suspended for failure to report child abuse. And 13 special needs child deaths over the last 10 years have been attributed to poor care at a Chicago area nursing home. A father from Nebraska protests the unwarranted snatching of his 14-year-old daughter. And Finally tonight, in North Carolina, an 11-year-old boy takes his parents' marijuana to school and rats them out after a dare anti-drug event. For these stories and all the latest dirt on the child protective industry, visit www.legallykidnapped.com. And until next week, this is Baby LK, over and out. Of course, that is only the tip of the iceberg of the billion-dollar child welfare industry news for the month. Let's do some YouTubing. This girl is from the Los Angeles area. She seems to be very well-spoken and articulate. She wants to tell the world that Child Protective Services destroyed her family. Let's take a look. I'm making this video because I've been through a lot and I'm not making this for attention. Attention needs to be brought to the subject. DCFS is trying to take us away from my mom again and they already did before. We have to live with my grandma. We had to live with my grandma after my dad died and my grandma, her name was Marilyn Cooper. Her name is Marilyn Cooper, and she abused us, and she beat me when I killed myself over and over again. And I told Child Protective Services she's abusing me, and they didn't care, and it took them an entire year before they sent us to foster care to get us away from my grandma, because they didn't care. They want to get us away from my mom. I have proof of this. I need help. If you're in the news, or you can help me, or you're like a famous YouTuber, help me. Okay, so we finally went back with my mom after nearly two years of being away from her on March 10th. We got out of foster care, everything was okay, and when I came back with my mom, I had been sad and depressed for five years because of Child Protective Services, because of what they did. They took away my childhood, like literally, like I was eight when all this started and I was forced to grow up really quickly. and. That's why I'm so mature, as people tell me. But, um, I've, I was happy. I'm happy here. I'm at my mom's house right now. I'm happy. This was, I finally found peace. I was happy. My life was normal. My life is normal when I'm with my mom. Everything just seems perfect. I like to sit. We live in the mountains. I sit in the forest. I meditate. I draw. I'm overall just so happy. I've never been so happy. In my entire life, I was depressed most of my life. I was sad because of my grandma and because my dad died and because of what Child Protective Services has done to my life. And everything was perfect. I was bullied when I was at school, but that didn't matter because I'm with my mom and my family needs to stay together. You don't know what it's like, unless it's happened to you, to have Child Protective Services come in and turn your life upside down. Yesterday we went to court and I was informed that they're going to try and take us away from my mom again because she tested positive for a test. She's not doing drugs. I'm with her all the time and I'm not just some kid defending my mom. This is the truth, okay? I probably sound like psychotic right now, but I'm pissed and I'm hurt and this isn't okay and I need help, okay? Because if I don't get help, I'm going back to foster care and then I'm going to go back to being depressed and a sad little person again. And I can't have that. I'm finally happy. I'm finally happy and okay and I'm trying to take that away. On Wednesday, because yesterday was Thursday, today is Friday, we had a meeting with our social worker. And 
everyone with our therapist they ha all had great things to say about my family and our social worker he promised you are not getting taken away from your mom there is a law that they have to tell us what their recommendation to the court is 10 days before court they didn't but the day before he said i'm gonna request that the case is closed and you stay with your mom the next day at court we find out that the um recommendation was that we are removed from my mom and that means either we go back with my grandma who is psycho and abused us or we go back to foster care and either way i'm gonna be extremely depressed i know that i'm finally happy when i'm with my mom i'm so so happy you know this if you know me you know how happy i am here how much better things are things are great with my mom i'm finally happy and if they're worried that i'm not safe I'm safe, I, I'm okay, I'm happy. And if their actual job is to protect the children, you're literally, they will destroy my brother and I if they put us back into foster care. We're happy, we're okay at my mom's house. We're not gonna be okay or happy or safe if they take us away again. I don't think they get that because there's something else going on. My grandma has so much money, she pays people off all the time. I know there's something else up. The attorney, I'm not going to say her name, but she's the county council attorney. She sits there and she lies. She was lying about me yesterday in court. She's lying about my mom. She just sits there and lies. And I've had to deal with that since I was eight years old, listening to her screaming at both of my parents. And now she's screaming at me. I'm not just some kid who doesn't know the laws, who just wants to stay with my mom. My mom doesn't do drugs. And I will stay with my mom. It's not, that's a promise. I am not going to foster care peacefully. And I'm a very peaceful person and peace is my most valued thing. So that says a lot. And um, I know what I'm talking about. I know the laws. I can defend myself. I can stand up for myself. I can protect myself and I will. They want to put us back into foster care. What I believe is because my stepdad is working on the case and he has so much proof that um, what they're doing is wrong and they just want to put us they just want to put us back in foster care as a way to stall because we have proof. And I look these things up because I have to. If I don't, they're just going to treat me like some kid who doesn't know what I'm talking about and that's not okay. And by the way, it's child protective services. They're supposed to be protecting me. By putting me back with my grandma or putting me back in foster care and taking us away from my mom, that is not protecting me, okay? I've been through so much, and the one thing on my mind since we got taken from my mom the first time two years ago was when am I going back to my mom? Six months ago, we finally went back, and I was finally happy again. Everything was perfect. This is my life. You can't... DCFS comes in, and they just turn my life upside down, and I never thought they would try this again just because... It's lies. I'm not crazy. This is the truth. And if you're in the news or you're a famous YouTuber or you can help me, if you can help me, help me. I'm not getting into detail and saying the proof that I have of DCFS, but I'm saying I'm terrified that they're going to come and hurt my family. Like, so this is a way to protect my family and myself because I'm terrified. I'm so sick of being terrified. <laughs> I'm terrified. Uh, they told me that it could happen any time they're going to take us from my mom again. And I can stand up for myself, but that that's not going to help. I need someone to help me. This is my life. To the judge, it's just another paycheck, but to me, it's my life. Please help me if you can help. Even if you're just like a friend watching this, you can help me. Please contact me. Just leave a comment if you're willing to help. I need all the help that I can get. And just to clarify, yesterday on my Instagram, something was posted about me wanting to kill myself because of the DCFS, and there were very personal things, like the people that I've lost and the people that are bullying me. I just want to say, notice how I'm not getting into detail about that, about what's happening to me for the sake of my privacy. I did not post that. We've been hacked so many times, and no one listens to me. I'm telling the truth. I did not post that, okay? I wouldn't post, if I was actually going to do something, I wouldn't actually post something about it. God. And just please, I'm begging someone out there, 
just help me save my family from DCFS, okay? I thought we were good when we went back with my mom, but they're going to try and take us away again, and I need all the help that I can get. Court, our next court date is on September 15th, but I'm terrified they're just going to show up at my house and try to take us away sooner than that. And I can't let that happen. I'm finally happy. For once, I am happy. And if you separate us from my mom, you being DCFS, I'm never going to find happiness again. I don't think you get that. So please, anyone, this is a cry for help. DCFS has turned my life upside down one too many times. I need help. I need to get the word out. If you can, just contact me and help me, please. That's that's all I'm asking. Um, just a discla disclaimer, I'm not posting this to get attention for myself. I'm posting this, this does need attention, to bring attention to the situation because I cannot be separated from my mother again. I can't handle that. There's only like so much that somebody can like actually take before they break. And the DCFS broke me when I was like 10. And I'm 13 now, that was three years ago. I can't handle this. They, my heart, I have heart problems because of them. Because of all the stress that they put me under. My dad, I, he did the same thing and I can't. Just please, if you're able to help me, help me. Um, and I know I sound like pretty mad and angry. I'm not an angry person. I'm just protecting my family. I will always protect my family. So if you actually watch this and if you're capable of helping me, help me, okay? I need all the attention I can possibly get to this situation. I know I didn't give enough like fact or proof, but if you're actually willing to help, contact me. I, I wrote a letter to the judge. I'll show you that. I just don't feel comfortable bringing this all onto YouTube because when we go to court, I guarantee you this video is going to show up and they're going to try and use it against us. Even though I'm just asking for help. I need some people to come to court with me to help me like defend myself and my family. I just need help, okay, with this situation in general. This is terrible and DCFS does this to so many people, not just myself. And I'm not bashing Child Protective Services. I'm telling the truth. So, I just need help. There's nothing wrong. There, this is a safe, healthy environment at my mom's house. Everything's perfect. It's amazing. And they want to destroy that. They want to take that all away. And I'm just a kid. I shouldn't be in this situation. DCF Child Protective Services put me in this situation when I was eight years old, and I've been in there ever since, nonstop. And I'm doing this on my own. I have chosen to make this video because we need help. My family needs help. They don't even know I'm making this video, okay? We need help. So if you actually have the heart or whatever it is, if you're able to help me, help me, okay? Help me protect my family. So if you watch this, thank you. And I wish you all of the happiness and the love and the peace you can possibly have. Let's go to our Taken of the Month. These are the Bose children. Devin, Shaylin, and Nashira were illegally kidnapped at my children's home on October 10, 1995 by CPS in Louisville, Kentucky. Note that I had previously reported various crimes of abuse committed against my children and I by my ex-husband, Edward Bose. In her words, their criminal, abusive, rapist, schizophrenic, manic depressant, child molester, and father did not want to live with us, and this would have been in violation of our EPOs and DVOs. But he was informed by CPS and the corrupt government agencies, which enabled the animal to continue to stalk, threaten, and harass me, along with uh, kidnapping their children and taking them to Indiana. Nothing was done about these incidents. In fact, they were rewarded by the criminal. They rewarded the criminal by allowing him and the foster care system to continue to abuse them in every form possible and force my son, Devin, to live with the monster. After all of the damage was done, my two girls, Shaylin and Shira, 
were sold into slavery, the black market slave trade, free foster care adoption, forced adoption, where they continued to be abused by the adoptive parents in Florida. You can find more Taken by searching Facebook at hashtag Taken. Okay, camera on me. Was that camera on Maria? Okay, I mean now. She's not Sally, you know. And we'll be back after this message. Find our YouTube channel by going to YouTube and searching producer Dennis Lawrence Silent Voices. We also have a sister channel with snippets from our show by searching MPR 49424. Again, that's MPR 49424. And let's hear from our good friend Baby LK. from Child Protective Services. Thank you so much to the producer of Baby LK. Every week as we open our show, you can see pictures of those children that lost their lives in foster care. Today, we have another to add. Murdered by the hands of the state, this is Alex Charles Boucher, a three-year-old boy with cerebral palsy and other medical needs. In the custody of Connecticut Department of Children and Families, was killed by his prospective adopted father, James Curtis, in Florida as punishment for soiling himself. Mr. Curtis wrapped Alex tightly in a blanket and left him for 30 minutes. Alex was asphyxiated. Jennifer Curtis was not charged. The Curtises were given custody of Alex even though their home study and background checks were not complete and would have revealed past violence. Well, that was a really sad story. I, I hate seeing that happen. And This program is dedicated to those that lost their lives at the hands of the state. I want to thank you, the viewers, for watching this week. You can catch us next week, same time, same channel. Until next week, my friends, remember, your, your voice can, can make, make the difference. difference.